All right, today's lesson is uh, 1.4, talking about the inverse of a function that's found on page 44 to 55 in your text. Our curriculum outcomes, uh, we're to 30.8, which we're talking about uh, understanding of functions, relations, inverses, and their related equations resulting through reflections in the x-axis, y-axis, and what's really important for us today is this line y equals x. Our lesson objectives, to learn what the notation of the inverse of a function actually is, like how you write it. To learn how to find the inverse of a function both graphically and algebraically. And to learn about something called the horizontal line test. Okay, so the inverse of a function is found by switching all of the x and the y values of all the points of that function. So if you were to graph the original function and its inverse on the same graph, you will find that it is like the original is being reflected in the line y equals x. So let's take a look at this specifically with an example. So we are going to switch all the x and y values of all the points. Now there's four main points here that we're going to switch. We've got a which is at negative 3 comma 1. Well if we switch the x and y that now becomes 1 comma negative 3. b was at negative 2 comma 3. So if we switch those two, it's now three comma negative two. C was at zero comma three. If we switch those two, it's three comma zero. And D, which was at one comma zero, is now at zero comma one. So if we kind of connect the dots, we can see this new function now. If the blue function, which we, is f of x, then the red function is f negative one and that is the notation that we used for an inverse. Now, the second point here that's important, it says it's like the originals being reflected in the line y equals x. Well, the line y equals x is the line that goes through 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, 3, 3. So hopefully you can see that the blue function is just reflected in this green line and that what's what makes the red function. So that's why they say it's like it's being reflected in the line y equals x. So not every function has an inverse that is also a function. Uh, recall that to tell if a graph is actually a function, we would use what we call the vertical line test which meant if a vertical line passes through that graph once, it is a function. If it passes more than once, it is not a function. So now when we're looking at a graph and you're wondering if the inverse is going to be a function, we would use something called the horizontal line test. Because we flipped the x and the y's values, if we use the horizontal line test on the original function, we'll be able to see if the inverted graph is also a function. So let's take a look. Here we've got two functions. We've got the one that we just talked about, the blue and the red. Um, in the blue function, if we draw vertical lines, it's clear to see the blue is actually a function because it only crosses, any of those vertical lines only cross once. If we were to draw horizontal lines, though, they cross more than once. They cross two places here. That means that the inverse is not a function. So where before we had said notation would be f negative x. Well, this actually isn't a function, so we kind of jumped the gun there. It is the inverse of the original, but it is not a function. Also, since we are switching the x and y values, that means that the domain, which are your normal x values, and your range, which are your normal y values of the original function, now become the range of the domain, respectively, of the new function or relation. Um, and if we are trying to find the equation of the inverse, so we were just talking about the graphs, but the actual equation, we need to switch the x and the y values and then solve for y. So here's our example. It says, find the inverse of the function f of x equals x squared plus 5. Is it also a function? So we're going to switch the x and the y value. Now we know that f of x is the same thing as saying y. So if I switch these, I will now get x equals y squared. If I'm solving for y, I need to move the 5 over. So that means I'm going to subtract. That's an x. 
and I need to solve for y, so I need to take the square root. And using the square root property, that gives us plus or minus the square root of x minus 5 equals y. Now, the second part of this question says, is the inverse also a function? Well, I know that this is a parabola. If I apply the ver uh, horizontal line test, I see that it crosses more than once, which means this thing is not a function because the original failed the horizontal line test. So in summary, we know that the inverse of a function is found by switching x and y values. That's the key, key thing. The domain and the range of the original becomes the range and the domain of the new function. They just switch spots, if you will. Um, you can find the graph of the inverse and the equation of the inverse. And the two graphs are reflections of each other in the line y equals x. And using the horizontal line test on the original function will tell you if its inverse is a function. So that's all for inverses. Uh, lots of little pieces of information that all sort of tie together. Your assignment, page 51 to 55 in the text, and we'll see you next day.